Well, how do we benefit from being diligent? Time passes more quickly when we're actively pursuing spiritual interests, when we're busy in Jehovah's service. Uh, Remember the illustration from this morning? Essentially, we're in the waiting room at the doctor's office. When does time go most, more quickly? When we're staring at the clock on the wall or when we're engaged in giving a witness to others? Our preaching also means life for us and those who listen, a prospect that Jesus highlighted in his next parable. So I invite you to notice now chapter 25, verses 34 through 46. What is the third parable? Well, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, which is still future, he will separate people just as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. Sheep on his right hand, goats on his left. Well, what would be the criteria for determining who are like sheep and who are like goats? Essentially, whether or not they support Christ's anointed brothers. Yes, Jesus the King takes very personally the action shown toward his brothers or anointed ones. His third parable teaches the other sheep to remain loyal and to support the anointed fully. Now, how can we apply the lesson on remaining loyal? In one word, obedience. Obey the faithful slave and those appointed to represent that slave, including elders in the congregation. But why should we obey? Very interestingly, Revelation chapter 14, verse 4 says that the anointed keep following the Lamb, Christ Jesus, no matter where he goes. So if the faithful slave follows the Lamb, then the direction, the guidance that they provide is Bible-based. And we should obey it, (laughs) is the message here from Gage Flegel recently appointed a governing body member. He's giving the final talk on the Friday of the Exercise Patients Convention with the theme, You Know Neither the Day Nor the Hour. Again, if his objective is to sound welcoming and not at all (laughs) culty or sinister or disturbing, He's failing miserably. I mean, he's just straight up telling his audience that they need to be obedient. In one word, obedience. Obey the faithful slave and those appointed to represent that slave, including elders in the congregation. Obey the faithful slave, which means obey the governing body, and obey their representatives in the congregation, namely the elders, There's no room for making a personal conscientious decision and saying, well, you know what? I'm supportive. I respect the elders in my congregation. I respect the governing body. I'm sure it's a challenging job that they do. But if I'm asked to do something that doesn't make any sense or even causes me harm or the ones I care about harm, you know what, I'm not going to do it. There's no space for that whatsoever in the Jehovah's Witness religion. It's do or die. You have to toe the line. You have to be obedient to any authority figure within this group, or you can expect to be annihilated at Armageddon. Now, you could be watching this as someone who's never been one of Jehovah's Witnesses, And you could be thinking, how do people fall for this? (laughs) How do you sit in the audience and just absorb this overtly culty controlling rhetoric, which is just outright saying, you need to obey or else. You need to obey without question. How does any of this sink in? And how do people take this religion seriously? Well, we get a clue towards the beginning of this clip. Time passes more quickly when we're actively pursuing spiritual interests, when we're busy in Jehovah's service. When we're busy in Jehovah's service, time passes more quickly. Jehovah's Witnesses are too busy 
to be asking questions. They're too busy to analyse these words or really think about their religion and what it's asking of them and the fact that their religion ultimately doesn't make sense. When you are on this constant hamster wheel of preaching, studying, attending meetings, attending conventions, family worship, you have all of these various activities taking up your time and you have sports and recreation, things that can just give your brain a bit of breathing space, frowned upon and you're told that you need to do those things in moderation but there's practically, practically no limit to how much time you can devote to being a Jehovah's Witness. You never have time to ask any questions, and you certainly don't have time to question a newly appointed governing body member when he stands on the platform and effectively says, obey or else.